Hello, welcome to Lazada Insider, featuring knowledge that makes a difference. We share trusted insights, forward-looking perspectives, and exclusive expert interviews to keep you ahead of the curve. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lazada Insider, and I'm your host, Katrina, from Lazada. With the rapid pace of digital transformation, it has become increasingly important for companies to equip their employees with the necessary digital skills. Today, we are very excited to be joined by expert guest Manal Rathor and delve into this topic. Manal is partner from BCG and also the program director of Rise for Business, which is a program designed to enable SMEs to capture the digital opportunities through impactful learnings of high demand business and digital skills. So hi, Manal. Welcome and thank you for joining us today on Lazada Insider. Thank you, Katrina, and very excited to be here uh, as part of the Lazada Insider series. Great. So to start off, could you introduce yourself a little bit better and your experience with our audience here? Sure. So uh, my name is Manal, as Katrina mentioned. Uh, I'm a partner with Boston Consulting Group uh, in Singapore. I've been with BCG now for almost uh, nine years, uh, worked across um, a variety of different offices, uh, started from India and now in Singapore, and even across these two, got to work uh, on projects across uh, Southeast Asia, China, India, um, and many different sectors and uh, industries. One of my current focus includes uh, looking at, you know, what are the digital trends, uh, specifically looking at, you know, what digital transformation means for uh, organizations of different sizes. Uh, what's the importance of upskilling and how can, you know, companies use that as a tool to drive growth and innovation and uh, sustainability. Sustainability is a, a big and growing topic uh, for all of our clients. Uh, as part of this, I'm also uh, the program director for BCG's uh, RISE program. RISE stands for Rapid and Immersive Skills Enhancement. And this is a program we are running in partnership with Skills Future Singapore. And specifically, I look at how do we help companies develop homegrown digital uh, talent. Uh, so I look at, you know, uh, building, strengthening our ecosystem uh, of partners so that we can reach out to companies uh, through partners like uh, Lazada and help them to uh, uh, strengthen their um, uh, talent base. Thank you for the introduction. Um, you are certainly an expert in digital transformation, digitalization, as you introduced just now. I mean, it has many permanent impacts on various aspects of business for sure. So in your opinion, how has digital transformation actually affected the demand for workforce skill sets? And are there any major trends that you want to share with our audience here? Digital looks very different now from what it used to look, you know, say a decade ago. Uh, in the first wave of digital, there was a lot of focus on cutting costs and outsourcing. And that's, you know, completely changed now. Digital is now a core competitive advantage and it's applicable for, you know, firms of uh, all sizes. So whether we are talking about how companies uh, reach out to their customers or go to market, I mean, this has fundamentally changed and it impacts everyone, whether they are in the B2C space or the B2B space. Um, additionally, you know, what is changing is uh, skills like data and analytics are becoming very, very important as more and more companies start to use cloud based solutions and they are still figuring out, you know, how to harness the power of their data. Uh, the other big digital trend is, you know, robotics and automation. This is changing many of the core activities, uh, especially say when it comes to manufacturing, I 4.0, as well as, you know, supply chain. And then cybersecurity is uh, also very, very critical uh, to think about how to you know, protect the company's interests as well as interests of uh, your customers or consumers. Thank you for sharing the top trends you have observed. So looking ahead into the future, say the next five to 10 years, do you anticipate any trends to accelerate, to maintain over the next um, foreseeable future? Yeah. So I think digital will continue to be important and specifically AI is only going to, you know, get bigger and bigger, bigger as companies use technology to streamline processes and improve customer experiences. 
uh, I think AI uh, at the foundation of AI, what we are looking at is a lot of you know data, machine learning, uh, seeing uh, how what are the kind of processes that can be automated to improve communication, collaboration, productivity, performance. And COVID has really taught us that even you know sectors and businesses which had remained behind brick and mortar walls for the longest time had to be uh, had to innovate and you know be present digitally. And I think specifically within AI, what is going to happen is that uh, many jobs um, are going to uh, become fundamentally different, you know, in nature. Like especially, say, if we are talking about uh, you know digital marketing, design of concepts. There are many uh, AI APIs and interfaces which can make this um, a much more uh, faster effort, really fundamentally changing the kind of skills that are needed there. The second mega trend is sustainability. So companies are prioritizing or starting to prioritize sustainability and implement environmental friendly practices. Uh, this is, you know, for their customers. This is to ensure that, you know, they are able to be uh, attractive even for you know their own employees and improve their employer uh, value value proposition and it's also very important for investors so sustainability is going to be very very important the third thing i would say is focus on resilience you know whether we are looking at individuals looking at upskilling themselves or companies reinventing their businesses or for company countries trying to you know uh, shore up their supply chains and make them much more diversified and uh, 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 much more shockproof, you know, especially in the changing uh, geopolitical uh, context. And the last thing I would say is, you know, collaboration models, especially work from home and hybrid uh, working. Uh, COVID is over now, but no matter what, some version of it is definitely here to say. And a lot of it also helps to, you know, drive productivity. And right now we are at a place where we can make the choices that, you know, what what are the interactions that uh, require physical presence and what can be done uh, remotely. Thank you. Let's delve a bit into the first point you mentioned about, you know, certain emerging technologies. I mean, AI is certainly one of those blockchain, cloud computing, all these. I mean, there seem to be on the tip of everyone's town right now. Um, so, so how do you see these emerging technologies actually shaping the future of the job market? Sure. So uh, emerging technologies like AI, blockchain, and cloud computing, they're already impacting the job market, right? And these impacts are definitely likely to continue in the coming years. Uh, AI, for instance, is already being used to automate routine tasks, improve decision-making, and even cre create new products, services, ideas, and concepts. Uh, this is likely to result in a shift in the type of jobs that are available with more demand for positions that require skills in data analysis, machine learning, and programming. Now, when it comes to blockchain, it has the potential to transform industries by enabling secure, transparent, and efficient transactions. And this is likely to create new job opportunities in areas such as blockchain development, cybersecurity, and supply, supply chain management. So anything you know where you would like to have traceability, uh, uh, have you know a uh, 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 high burden of evidence in terms of transactions that has happened, blockchain uh, can be very very critical. The third thing I would highlight is cloud computing. You know, cloud computing is already uh, being used in businesses of all uh, sizes. And um, uh, there's going to be likely more demand for jobs in areas such as cloud architecture, security, as well as cloud migration. And you know, beyond this, I think across businesses, the skills that will be important are around uh, how do you reach out to your customers better? So you know, everything that helps in better go-to-market, digital marketing, omni-channel sales is important. Everything that helps you to be more efficient internally. So whether you're talking about supply chain, operations, even corporate functions, right? HR, finance, it's going to be very, very important. The third thing I would say is, you know, something that helps you to create the growth engine. So, you know, how businesses can think of new ideas, how fast that can adapt and people who can help companies with that will be important. And then, of course, you know, at the bottom, you do need the basic um, uh, data and tech related uh, technical skills that i was you know just talking about uh, those are also very important 
but all of them need to be applied in the context uh, of their business. Excellent sharing. So uh, you talk quite a lot of uh, examples when it comes to technical skills, and those are certainly very, very important. But beyond that, what soft skills do you believe are essential for individuals to, to be successful in the digital workforce? That's a very good question, Katrina. I find, you know, based on all my interactions with companies as well as, you know, individuals on the kind of people they are looking for and where people are struggling, I feel mindset is, you know, uh, one of the biggest um, uh, factors. So uh, mindset plays out in many different ways, right? It's the context of where you are, what your expectations are. But even beyond that, you know, how do you really uh, motivate yourself to perform well on your current job or, you know, prepare yourself for the future. Um, I, I think in addition to that, soft skills such as communication, collaboration, critical thinking and adaptability will be increasingly important as the job market becomes more dynamic and uh, uncertain. And uh, lifelong learning will uh, become essential to remain competitive. Uh, because of the pace that technology is uh, evolving at. And job seekers will need to be you know, willing and be able to continuously learn new skills and keep reinventing themselves based on you know, the changing uh, business and the technology context. Thank you. So, um, I mean, the, the, the key kind of topic that we want to discuss today is around you know, the gap between the skills that's required uh, for the future and the yeah. actual skill sets that people possess right now. So, so based on your experience, what do you see as the most pressing skill set gap um, or from the other perspective, opportunities, right, that businesses, especially SMEs in Southeast Asia, need to address? Yeah, that's, again, you know, a very good question. I feel, um, you know, whenever we talk about SMEs, it's important to really think about their context uh, and the macro environment that they are trying to survive in um, while we you know, think about what are the biggest say uh, gaps or opportunities for them. And I feel, you know, one, I think now SMEs are ready and willing and they want to be, uh, you know, grow digital. They are ambitious and they want to get there. Uh, the challenge that they often uh, face is that, you know, digital can sometimes be a very broad term and very ambiguous. And I think the biggest problems that SMEs sometimes face is figuring out what should really be their, you know, digital strategy. Uh, how should they think about, you know, digital and how should they really think about the priorities that come at the intersection of, you know, their business outcomes and technology? Because eventually digital is a means to the end outcome, which is higher revenues, greater profits, you know, higher growth. Uh, it's not a uh, uh, it's not the it's not a goal uh, in itself, and what we've actually seen is many SMEs go down the journey on uh, focusing on you know buying a certain tool or a solution and spending time, money, and resources around it, and then realizing it doesn't work for them. So I feel as step one, it's very important for SMEs to you know step back and think about what do, what is their digital strategy what do they need to you know realize their overall outcomes ambition and aspiration and how digital can play a role in that and with that in mind you know starting to think about uh, what would they like to change you know when they reach out to customers internally within their operations and what are the set of you know integrated solutions or client solutions what would be the best fit answer for them in that context and what they need to you know build and customize for themselves what can they buy from the market and you know which are the areas that they need to partner um, uh, on or outsource say to other providers so uh, having that frame i think is very very uh, important and once you figure that out then what we find is that the areas where you know there are the biggest skill gaps uh, are actually you know again uh, Digital and sustainability, I think they are emerging as the biggest uh, lead, uh, uh, areas of gaps. And if I double click on digital, I think areas around data and analytics, uh, project management, uh, looking at, you know, how do you ensure uh, timely delivery of projects, managing the risks, very, very important. Third, I would say is uh, really focusing on, you know, 
uh, digital marketing and how do you drive uh, customer acquisition uh, at a effective uh, ROI, return on investment, very, very critical. And then overall, really thinking about, you know, digital strategy uh, and how to drive growth and innovation is also an area where there are, you know, big skills. And then beyond this, technical skills around uh, AI, blockchain, uh, cloud computing, many of these are catching up in addition to cybersecurity. You mentioned, you know, this uh, framework that I really like. It always starts from the end goal you want to achieve. And then from there, strategize and identify the gaps you want to close and the skill sets um, needed to close those gaps. Yeah. Um, you also highlighted some of the key areas where, you know, there's potentially bigger skill sets if you look across different SMEs. So how do you believe these gaps will actually impact businesses? Um, so I think for companies and especially for SMEs, you know, um, talent and skills is a big issue. The smaller companies often struggle to find the right talent and especially in a competitive market, you know, if we look at Singapore or even broader Southeast Asia, it can be quite uh, uh, challenging to attract, you know, the right talent when stiff when faced with stiff competition versus the, with, with the larger, you know, tech companies or other um, uh, newer companies that are coming up. So everybody wants a you know cool and a sexy uh, job title and may not always want to work uh, in a smaller uh, company. So I think that is uh, one uh, gap that they uh, need to uh, achieve. I think second, uh, the ability to give you know clarity and comfort to your employees that this is what we are trying to do. This is what you know. Um, is the future and why it is beneficial to work on those skills is also very, very important. And we find that talent is actually one of the biggest barriers for companies to help achieve their ambition and desired outcomes. Even if we look at, you know, different archetypes of SMEs, even if we look at com companies which are the second or third generation um, uh, companies where the new generation is, you know, trying to figure out what they would like to do. Uh, we find, again, you know, they often struggle, one, in aligning the mindset with the previous generation, but second, also, how do they drive the growth if, you know, they don't have the right talent? Uh, second, if you look at companies that are, say, interested in, you know, going regional or uh, growing faster, they struggle with, you know, how do they think about talent in the local market versus the markets that they would like to be in? What should be the right operating model? How do they go? When is the right time to invest in talent or not? So very important for all of them. And I think even for employees as well, uh, lifelong learning, you know, is a way to ensure career uh, longevity and ensure continuous growth in their careers. What we've seen is, you know, um, that the half-life of skills is becoming lesser and lesser over time. So that era of, uh, you know, going to college, doing your undergrad and, you know, working in the same job for 20 years is gone. Uh, individuals need to continuously reinvent themselves. Even companies need to continuously reinvent themselves. If we look at the top 20 companies of now versus, you know, 30 years ago, the list is entirely different. So I, I think change is the only constant and need to continuously reinvent whether you are a company or an individual. Thank you, Munal. Thank you for sharing your valuable insights on the skill sets required for the future of work and also highlighting the importance of addressing the potential gaps to, to close, um, to be fully ready uh, for that future. Uh, we will continue our discussion in our next episode about the ways and strategies to narrow these gaps in more details. So please stay tuned for that. And once again, thank you so much, Munal, for the sharing. This is Azana Insider. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you click follow and subscribe so you don't miss our latest insights and expert interviews. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, take care.